Hello everybody, welcome back to Barrel's Garage. What are we doing today? Well, I'm going to show you the right way to drop in a points distributor or any distributor, HEI, whatever, into a big block Ford. Now this method right here, it applies to anything, whether you're working on a Chevy, Chrysler, Mopar, any, any of them. You can use the same method. But specifically today, we're dropping it into a 385 series, 429, 460, this one happens to be a 460, big block Ford. And how to get it right every time. Now, there's a couple of steps in this, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll dispel a few myths on forums and everything. Uh, once again, everybody says you point the rotor, as I'll show you here. Everybody says you point that little rotor to number one. Absolute, total, 100% hogwash. And I'll show you exactly why. Now, also, I'll be showing you some other things that I had to do with this particular case because this happens to be a little bit modified. So we had to do a few things to uh, uh, work around this uh, tunnel ram, and I'll show you those too. But here we go, and I'll show you how to drop the distributor in the right way every time, all the time. Here we go. And it's super simple. I know, I've had to do it a few times on this very one. So here we go and I'll show you the steps to make sure you're, that uh, you never have the excuse of bad timing because there's no, no such thing as good bad timing. Here we go. Okay, the first tool I'm gonna use in this step is an easy one. As you can see, it's just a bump starter. To, uh, it helps you to roll the engine over, especially with this one right here. She's running about 11 to one compression. Trying to turn that crank over is a little bit tough. So get you one of these. They're super, super simple, super cheap. And they hook up really easy. They just go up on the starter. You got a hot side. This goes straight to the battery. This one you put on the ignition side, the one that goes up to your key. Just branches over like that and you hit the button and it bumps it over. Okay, so you got your bump starter right there. You see I got it set over here. The other step in the process is you got to take out the number one spark plug. It's right here. On a big block Ford, or pretty much every Ford, yeah, every Ford, they number their cylinders one, two, three, four on this side, five, six, seven, eight on that side. So number one is always over here on the passenger side all the way to the front. Okay, that's pretty simple. And like I said, that's standard for every Ford. So go ahead and pull that spark plug out. Always do this step. I know a lot of people will just go off of the harmonic balancer down there and line it straight up with the mark. Well, that mark will come up to your pointer either at top dead, center, or top bottom center. So you got to make sure that it's always on compression stroke and ready to fire and not on the, the exhaust stroke and that pointer down there that mark down there will confuse you that way it'll either be 100 percent right or 100 percent wrong the easy way to do this don't overcomplicate it take that number one spark plug out right there and because i got my handy dandy bump starter right here make sure everything's clear from the belts Stick your finger over the hole. Super simple. Right there. Hear that poof? She's ready to fire. That's top, almost top dead. Now, you can see down there. I'll try to get it here. Okay, down here on my timing marks down here. I took a Sharpie and put a big, thick line right there. That's my true top dead center. Then I drew another thick line up here on my 10 degree mark. That 10 degree is crucial and I'll show you here in just a second why. Now, I just bumped it just past. This is where this line needs to be right now, is right on my pointer. Ooh, I need to tighten that belt. So, it's a big block board. That's a 15 sixteenths. Socket, I just got it easy on this one right here. I'm gonna roll it back counterclockwise to it. Now, you don't wanna loosen that bolt, so just use nice, even pressure to pull it back. Ooh, that engine's got some compression. 
to top dead right there. Now I'm ready to drop the distributor because I got compression and number one right here, number one is ready to fire. Now on the internet and here and forums and everywhere you look and it says again to drop that in you point that rotor to number one it's completely and totally wrong actually if you want to go stock you've seen my other video on how you can actually put this in anywhere you want well I tried it on many many times on this but you can see that scratch mark right here on the tunnel ram I actually had to mill about a quarter inch off of that tunnel ram in order to make room for the distributor to get in there I tried every location I tried dropping this cam gear down on every tooth trying to find a spot where it would give me enough timing adjustment to actually get it to fire yeah I'll leave a link here to my other video on this subject on how you can move where number one is on the cap so you can work around stuff like this well on this one I tried all of them and I couldn't get enough timing adjustment off of it in order to dial it in I got really close but eh. I finally broke down and pulled out the nibbler and just milled out a little on the tunnel ram. Now the distributor is free to move however it needs to be. So I'm going to set this to a stock regular 1969 specification on where this goes. It points to number seven. Okay. Do not believe everything is here on the internet or try and everything like that because generally speaking everything's going off of a small block Chevy and yes small block Chevy's that rotor does point to number one after 1965 <laughs> uh, that, again uh, you can go back and watch my other video on that and the reason Chevy moved that pointer to wherever it needed to be but this one I'm gonna set for 1969 through 71 points regular standard points big block Ford 460 or 429 here we go and I'll drop her in here for you okay here we go let's drop this distributor in there now now to get this to point towards number seven as it shows in the book and at the end of the video I'll show you the book all right so it's got to drop down in the hole and you got to get it to line up right in there okay she's down just just get her down to where she's set like that okay now I have to get this to point over uh, if, if the tunnel ram wasn't on here you could see it plain but it's got a point over here to number seven here we go As I'm moving it like that, just lift up a little bit on it and you'll feel it come off of the gear down in, on the cam gear. What I'm doing is I'm just lifting it up and dropping it into each cog in that wheel gear. That, and you'll notice as I drop it down in, it rotates in because they're a spiral cut like a worm gear. So you got to kind of guess right now it won't go down all the way because I'm not into the oil drive, oil pump drive shaft. And I'll show you the easy way to get it to drop in on that. Okay, so to start it out, I'm right about here. That's pointing closer to number eight. Let's see, I want to move it one more. We'll start right there. Okay, now take your handy starter right here because I'm not all the way down I'm about a quarter inch more that it's got to drop but it won't go down why because I got to make that drive oil pump drive shaft which is a hex on a it looks like a big allen wrench that big long allen wrench that sticks up off of the 
oil pump that's down below coming all the way up and it's got to mash into the distributor. That's what drives your oil pump. Now to get that to mash up, again, because I got my handy little bump starter here, just give it a bump. There she goes. Now I think that's going to be too much. I might have to do that one again. Roll it back on the crank. Okay, there's TDC. Okay, now I'm too far. I got to go one more tooth over. All right. We'll try that one. Oh, I got lucky. It matched right up on that one. Sometimes you get lucky. Now it's all the way down. I just happened to get lucky and it slid in. Uh, that's too much though. I'm pointing more to uh, number two. We'll stick the cap on it there and see where we're at with that. When you buy a new cap, it, number one is generally marked. And there it is right there. So she's ready to fire now when I put this cap on. Most caps are. Because they figure you're going to put it back in the stock location. Get that out of the way. Okay, there's number one. There's where she wants to fire at that. Okay, that only gives me about that much going that way. We'll bring her back one more. Okay, now I'm not mashed up to my oil pump drive shaft anymore. We'll get her to mash up. Right there. Now I'll turn the, yeah, I can turn it backwards that far. If I have to go more than just a little bit, I'll always take it clear around one more time. Bring her back top dead center. Right there. Okay, now she's pointing in. I'm happy with that. Go straight back like that. Put my cap back on. I'm looking for number one to be right here. Now to line that up with the... Uh, on this one, I gotta connect that one in order for it to clear the tunnel ram. You probably won't have to do that on yours. Okay. That's about where my distributor is, my rotor is. That's number one. That gives me this much turn or this much turn in order to fine tune in my timing. That's what this is for. Your, your adjustment here is that's how you dial it in those last few degrees. Turn it to where she's just about to open. That puts that clamp right there.
So, right there, she should be in time. Now, on this one, I got a little bit more work to do. Uh, you could tell I had to, uh, it's because of the tunnel ram. Uh, if you don't have a tunnel ram, <laughs> which, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you just got the single carb. You don't have to do this final step that I'm going to do here, but uh, like I said, it's, it's one of the workarounds you got to do with extreme modifications like this. But you notice I had on that back clamp, I got to turn the distributor in order to get that clamp on, and then I can turn it back. Just one of the headaches of a tunnel ram. Uh, and the reason why I had to carve out about a quarter inch of the aluminum on that tunnel ram so that spring clip that holds the cap on had enough clearance to turn all the way around. Now I, I tried for days trying to find a good combination, but I, I tried every row, every cog on that cam gear, trying to get around from carving on the tunnel rim. Close as I get it is two degrees before top dead center, and uh, she'd run that way, but she's she ain't that happy. And uh, well, I'm taking a whole bunch of horsepower out of it by running it that way so I'm uh, for when we first fired it and kind of drove it around the block and actually got it out of the shop so uh, we get the other things in and out of here now I'm finally setting it and I've carved that out so I can get full timing advance and retard out of it when I find when I fine tune it in now uh, which would take a whole bunch longer video and you're willing to watch but when I fine tune it in what I'll do is down here on the base of the distributor. Once I hit it where she's wanting to be good and happy, I'll take a Sharpie and I'll scribe a line on the distributor and then down on the block. Well, I guess, yeah, I'll do it this way so you can see what my hand's doing. And then if I ever have to change the distributor cap, change the rotor, do a little basic tune up on it, I can spin that. Uh, distributor out of the way undo the clamps pull it drop new set of points in it uh whatever replace the cap stick it back on and then i can twist it back to where she's right dialed in to where it needs to be with that just by matching up my two lines but like i said that's going to take me a few minutes here uh i just wanted to show you on how to drop that distributor in the right way every way all the way and uh well here's the book on how uh where I got a lot of this information from. You can see there, plain as day, in the manual, number one is over here, number one cylinder is over here. They always point over here to number seven. Every book, every manual, everything I've heard on the internet says, Point the rotor to number one, drop it in the hole, and you'll be just fine. Yeah, even the Ford forums say that, and it's completely wrong. Uh, if you do that, oh, it's going to slam your vacuum advance clear over against your coil just to get it uh, dialed in enough to get it to run, and it's probably going to run like total crap. <laughs> I mean, that's almost 180 out going the wrong way because, like I said, that vacuum advance canister is going to come around and hit the other side and you're not going to be able to turn it enough to get it dialed in where it needs to be. So I hope that helps everybody out there. Uh, these Fords, you know, again, from everything I've read, just let a Ford be a Ford. It wants to be a Ford. Don't try to make your Ford into a Chevy. All right, I hope that helps out there. In the meantime, get out there and get some metal hot. We're all going to keep these old girls on the road where they belong. Even if we do wild and crazy custom work like this, we'll catch you on the next one.